Hey everyone, this is Mick from Brutalitopia here. I am here for another interview with Ben Sharp, who many of you may more commonly know, know as Cloud Kicker. Uh, ben, thank you so much for doing this interview with us. Why don't you start off by kind of telling us what's been uh, going on in the Cloud Kicker universe? Um, recently, I mean, how, how far back do you want me to go? Um, well, I know that you have a uh, some new material coming out, just kind of general good things that have been happening lately, things you're looking forward to? Oh, well, I, uh, I made a blog post this past Saturday to let everyone know to expect uh, music to be out on, on Saturday, the 14th of September. And uh, from what I've seen, people have been responding very well to that. And it, I'm pretty excited about it because I'm, you know, I've been working on this for the past year or so. A uh, little less than a year, and um, it's it's always exciting to get the you know some new stuff out when they open. Absolutely. How would you um, this new album? Is this going to be a full length album? By the way, I see it's only about like four or five tracks. I don't know how what their lengths are or anything, but it's four tracks, um, and it's just around 40 minutes long. So yeah, it would definitely consider, I consider it a full length. Yes. Very cool. Um, how would you, this new album, of course, being entitled Subsume, um, how would you describe it as being, what sets this album apart as opposed to your past releases? Uh, my, when I let my art guy, Charlie, when he listened to the album uh, to get everything ready and come up with ideas, for the artwork, he told me that he thought that it sounds like, um, like a, a cross kind of between beacons and let yourself be huge, which, so that's what he thinks. Okay. Um, everyone will make their own opinions. Mm -hmm. Personally, personally, I think it's, um, a little more akin to, uh, some of the pre pre beacons material, but it's definitely, I think enough time has passed. Between Beacons and now, I mean, it's been three years. Sure. So it kind of let me let me uh, kind of forget about it and and stop trying to stop trying consciously to to top Beacons, which I didn't ever want to do. Right. So I've I've gone back to that style, and it was really fun to do that. But at the same time, I think it's something new that I've never done before. Very cool. Um... I know you, for obviously people who may not be as acquainted with Cloud Kicker and what it's all about, it's very much a DIY project that you take on yourself where you, you know, record, produce, everything. Um, how exactly did that come about for you? How did Cloud Kicker exactly start? Was it just like out of the blue one day you decided just to start recording music? Was it as simple as that or was there a little more to it? Well, I mean, yes and no. Uh, it's started it, it never really started i mean this writing and playing music has been a continuous process that has been going on uh you know i want to say since the day i started playing guitar but definitely since the day i started uh you know played in my first band or played in my garage with someone there's been a continuous line of like writing music and um trying new things but Definitely, the process accelerated once I uh, uh, kind of left the, the bands that I had been a part of and pursued my own uh, just my own style mm -hmm. and really exploring the kind of music that I just I wanted to represent myself and not anyone else. Sure. Uh, Out of curiosity, what were those first few bands you were in like? Um, they were. I mean, I was. The, we're talking about me being like 15 until uh, 18, 19, 20, something like that, like okay. 15 to 20. So like a good five years of, of me, like starting to write music and getting comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. And at the time, um, like the first metal metal band that I ever really got into was uh, Avenged Sevenfold because they were a local, like, <laughs> I mean, this was in, I saw them play with like 15 people. Right, back a, in the day. <laughs> you know, in a, at a, a concert in the Valley in Southern California. Sure. So like my, the first band I was in was like, I was trying to copy them. Mm -hmm. And then the 
next band that I was in, like I was really into uh, Between the Buried and Me and like Glass Shaw mm-hmm. amongst others. So I was like trying to blend those two together. And then, um, you know, when I started writing music for Cloud Kicker, I was really just riffing off of my interpretation of Meshuggah's Catch 33. So, nice. I mean, it's obviously all the, 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 the story is more complicated than that, but that's basically like what the different phases for me have been so far. Very cool. What was uh, the decision not to have like vocals or anything in it? Does that kind of just play into your creative control over Cloud Kicker as a whole? Well, yeah, um, but more so, I mean, like, the first time I ever heard, um, like, Explosions in the Sky mm-hmm. was, like, a really big turning point for me, because that's kind of, like, the music that I I had been wanting to listen to, and I didn't even know it existed. Sure. And so, like, the first time I heard one of their albums, it was, like, it, it, it really adjust, yeah, it I, I adjusted <laughs> myself. It, yeah, I was like, wait a minute, this is something you can actually do. Is like, you don't have to have vocals, right? To make to make music legitimate. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you know, I never really cared too much for vocals to begin with. I'm really more of a music musical person. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's just that's just the kind of music I want to write. How would you uh, describe? Uh, both advantages and disadvantages of having complete control over what you produce? Um, I honestly can't think of a disadvantage, and the advantages are too numerable for me to get into. Okay. I mean, what are the big ones? I just, the big ones are just that I have total control over what I do. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying that as like I'm a control freak, so I need sure. everything to be exactly perfect. I just mean that when – like music is very, um, it, it's something that I really pour myself into. So when I listen back to it, you know, now when I go back and listen to like the discovery mm. or even the, the stuff that I was writing and putting on my space, even before that, um, you know, it, it represents something to me that I can, I can hear, um, what exactly what I was thinking and the, the, you know, what, what I was doing at the time almost like a little, you know, journal. Sure. Um, and that's something that it, it, when I listen to it, I know that it's entirely me, mm. entirely my, my ideas that are coming back. Um, and that's something that I wouldn't, that wouldn't be there uh, if there were other people involved. I know you've been vocal about not, and obviously you have never embarked on like a full length tour or anything or any shows that I'm aware of. Um, and since this cloud kicker isn't exactly something you do for a living, uh, as if I remember correctly, um, have there been any changes in that mindset for you at all? Or are you still pretty steadfast and not being too eager to embark on any tours or anything? It's not that I don't want to. It's just that it's not very, it wouldn't be a very practical thing for me to it's, embark on right now. It's certainly tough. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I, w- I think playing shows would be really fun, but I don't know that playing like thirty shows in a month would be very fun. Okay. You know, just kind of get tedious. Uh, yeah, and that's not, that's not what I'm driven to do at this point. I'm really just driven to write music. Mm-hmm. Um, at some point in the future, that may change, and I'm not totally against the idea of doing it. If I could do like a, you know, play like a few. If I could get together like a band of people that I could just call on and say, "Hey, do you want to play a show like next week? We'll just we'll book some venue and we'll all get together." Right. Like that would be perfect. Mm-hmm. But until I can until I can invest the time into making something like that happen, I'm totally content to not do that. Okay. Have you had people actually approach you saying like, "Hey, I'd totally be down to do this if you wanted to?" Yeah, tons of people. But you know, and then then you gotta you gotta get into the process of like either vetting them or auditioning right. or some somehow you know and i want to if i ever did that i'd want it to be with people that i connected with personally too so that we'd all kind of be on the same page sure and that's just that's just a process have you ever had any like bigger bands like kind of call you out and try and get you out on the road with them or no not not try and get me out on the road with them but i've definitely had bands just tell me that they appreciate what i do and that's very meaningful. That's awesome. That's got to be even more gratifying in some ways. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
But that would definitely be cool though, seeing you like play like even just local shows every now and then. That would definitely be awesome. Um, being from Chicago here, I would definitely make the trek to Ohio <laughs> if that was the case. Maybe we could uh, do a middle ground, and I could play a show in Fort Wayne or something. Oh, that that would be even better. <laughs> um, moving forward, though. Um, what would you say, kind of, I, I mean, you mentioned kind of like when you were starting Cloud Kicker, like BT Bam and Meshuga and influences like that. What are some other influences people may not exactly suspect from listening to your music that play heavily into kind of your creative thought processes musically? Hmm. I would definitely say that ISIS is an influence that even I don't fully give enough credit to. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're not an influence like, Every you know, every Sunday I have to listen to Panopticon. It's not. Sure. It's not even like that. It's just that something about their music really got into me, as even as infrequently as I listen to um, their albums. I still find myself every once in a while I'll be writing a part, or, or an idea will come to me, and I'm like, oh wow, that's totally an ISIS idea. So they're they're pretty deep in there for some reason. I I, I just like I liked. Well, I currently like, even though they're not a band anymore. They're whole right. vibe. Uh, so that's one. Um, it's tough for me to think about that right now because I've been like, all I've been doing for the past couple months is just listening to this album that I've been making and trying yeah, to make it being in your uh, own stuff. Yeah, like pushing it off. Mm. But I know that, uh, um, like, when I was writing, "Let Yourself Be Huge," sure, I was. I was listening to a lot of Sufjan Stevens. Interesting. When I when I was writing Fade, like I was literally trying to just copy Siamese Dream. And, <laughs> uh, you know, like the kind of mid, early to mid '90s alternative mm. rock, like Sunday Day Real Estate and um, like Hum. Okay. Um, cool. And that's. I mean, that, I don't know if people would be surprised by that, but. It's just kind of interesting just to kind of see the eclectic mix of everything that kind of plays into what, you know, is outputted by Cloud Kicker. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would say that I wouldn't have written the newest album. I wouldn't have written the newest album, Subsume, um, if I had not been to a Meshuggah show in early 2013. Nice. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that single night was like such a... <laughs> such a springboard for me to get back into that writing style. Yeah, I, I had gone to a, a Meshuggah show. It was like, I think it was with Baroness and Decapitated opening for him. And it was like, I had, you know, obviously always expected amazing things, but it's just like, even your expectations of what that show would be like, were just totally blown away <laughs> by how huge they are. Yeah. Um, yeah. For a point I thought of, um, since Cloud Kicker is more of a, kind of like a side project, if you will, you don't do it for a complete living. How much time exactly do you devote to it on the side when you're not, you know, doing your regular job? It really depends. Um, does it go in like bursts or something like that? It does. It definitely does. Um, there are, you know, from month to month, there are months where I spend no time. I mean, I've gone like <clears throat> an entire month without even picking up a guitar for <laughs> And then there are times when that's all I want to do. And then at the end of the process, like, like I said, the past couple months, um, uh, I've been devoting a lot of time to it just on the technical, technical aspects of it, you sure. know, uh, getting, you know, doing the mixing and the mastering, which I do all myself, mm-hmm. just trying to get it to sound the way I want it to sound. So do you have like your own studio in your like house or is it like somewhere nearby that you record or, I wouldn't call it a studio, but I have my office in my house, and it has like decent, uh, good enough. <laughs> it, 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 you know, I have my my Mac uh, desktop or my what is it iMac, whatever it is. Yeah, sure. Uh, I have the my decent like JBL mixing speakers, and then I have my guitars there, and uh, it, you know, I I have all my equipment in there. Um, and it's like an okay place to mix, so it's, that's what I use. Whatever works. <laughs> well, just to kind of leave the interview off here, I always like to leave interviews off on kind of uh, lighter notes. Um, do you follow NFL at all? 
No, you don't. Okay, because I was I got a I got a fantasy draft soon, and I was gonna wonder about your input on that, but I'll skip that one. Um, okay. Let's say um, I guess this might be already answered by some of the influences you gave earlier, but let's say next week you did have that show that you were able to you know put together on the fly, and you were able to get any other two bands you'd want to play on that bill with you. Who would Cloud Kicker play along with? Um, I would definitely want uh, Intro Knot, and I'm sh- I know that they would be willing to play that show also. And um, I don't know. I don't want to say Mushuga just because it's so obvious. <laughs> um, the expected. <laughs> but maybe Sufjan Stevens because I've never seen him live and I would like to see him live. So maybe I could open for him. That would, that would definitely be a very diverse show. <laughs> That would be stupidly diverse, and I don't think many <laughs> people would want to go to it, but I would. <laughs> Definitely a once-in-a-lifetime show, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, everyone, this has been another Brutalitopia exclusive interview with uh, Ben Sharp here, a.k.a. Cloud Kicker. Uh, be sure to get his new album, uh, Subsume, which I believe is another week and a half, the 14th, correct? Yes. That it comes out, so definitely pick that up. And uh, Ben, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Not a problem.